Welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about accrual, cash, and modified bases, and what does it all mean? So we'll be discussing the basics of what are they and the advantages and disadvantages. So let's get started. There are three general bases of accounting that are used by nonprofits. And these include the accrual basis, cash basis, and the modified cash basis. For gap purposes, accrual basis is required. But for those nonprofits that don't need to adhere to gap due to no board requirements, no loan covenants, or no awards requiring gap financials, the options of cash and modified cash may be appealing. So let's get started. So accrual basis of accounting corresponds with the concepts of recognizing revenues as they're earned and expenses as they're incurred. And it provides the most accurate depiction of revenues and expenses on the financial statements. The advantages of accrual basis accounting include greater transparency, more accurate depiction of the financial position and activities of the nonprofit, and compliance with various awards and debt covenants. Because of these factors, many boards and large contributors prefer to see financials presented on the accrual basis. Additionally, it can make comparisons from one period to the next easier. So it makes it easier to identify trends within revenues and expenses and just makes it more comparable overall. The disadvantages of accrual basis accounting are, well, it requires a more skilled person to do the accounting and that can take more time than cash basis or modified cash basis. Um, it means that you're gonna need to have an internal accountant that is aware of the rules and prepares the appropriate schedules as needed. And if you're using an outsourced accountant, it may mean that they require more information from you to ensure that the transactions are properly recorded and that the accounting is accurate under the accrual basis. The cash basis of accounting basically means that revenue is recorded when it's received and expenses are recorded when they're paid. This means it doesn't really provide an accurate depiction of revenues and expenses on the financial statements. The advantages of cash basis accounting are, well, you will be able to hire someone at a lower rate because there's a lower level of skill required. Um, it does focus more on cash flows because if you look at the income statement or the statement of activities, since you're recording everything in cash, it's basically kind of like a cash flow statement. You're just seeing the cash in and out. Um, and so write-offs, like usually write-offs for nonprofits are pretty low. Uh, contributors tend to not uh, default on something that they've promised to give. Program revenues generally people pay and membership dues are typically uh, received. But if you do have a problem with write-offs, it's going to be easier because you're not going to need to record any sort of bad debt expense or bad debt allowance. And it means that you're never going to have kind of an overestimate of revenues from those members that actually end up not paying or those contributors that end up not paying. Um, so 
this means that you know management is able to see more of a depiction of where the cash flow of the organization is um, because of the lack of accruals. Now, disadvantages of cash basis include that, well, they're not forward looking, they're more difficult to compare from one period to the next and revenues and expenses may differ from accrual basis accounting by a significant amount of time. Uh, financials prepared using cash basis are not gonna include count, accounts receivable or accounts payable, which means that management will have less information to make short-term financial decisions on. And the same thing is true with revenues and expenses um, they're not going to be very comparable from one period to the next because of the lack of accruals. Um, and now this effect may be smoothed over time, like year to year versus quarter to quarter or month to month, but it can still be significant. And I've definitely seen where it has been a significant amount. Now, modified cash basis combines some elements of the cruel basis and cash basis accounting. And generally what you would see with modified cash basis is you're not gonna see the AP and AR really coming into play, um, but you're gonna see some additional things like debt, and you're going to see fixed assets included and then you're going to see the associated amortization and depreciations of those particular items you know since the short-term accruals are still not going to be there you're not going to have the ar you're not going to have the accounts payable you're not going to have inventory a lot of times and the advantages of modified cash basis is that it provides more relevant in in information than the cash basis, but without the time or costs needed to do full accrual basis accounting. Of course, the disadvantages of the modified cash basis is that it still lacks transparency of accrual basis when it comes to expenses and revenue and it can still result in less informed short-term decisions. Now, you can convert from cash basis to accrual basis. Um, I've had clients that I've worked with where we would convert their um, cash basis accounting to accrual basis at the end of the year and it involves a good deal of work. It'll take probably the, the gathering of all the documents will take the client quite a bit of time unless they're very well organized. Um, and then the going through of that can take several days to, to, um, to go through and find everything that needs to be adjusted. But if this is a road that you choose to take, um, these steps are really that you need to add in the accrued expenses. You know, this means going through invoices received but not paid as of year end, as well as invoices received after year end to make sure they weren't something for that were part of the ser service period during the year and record a liability for any of those goods or services that were received prior to year end. Then prepaid expenses as well, you're going to have to add those in. And this means identifying any expenses that were paid prior to year end that for which the you know, goods or services weren't received until after year end. And then you're going to have to add in accounts receivable. And this means identifying any revenues that were earned or contributions that were promised prior to year end, but that weren't received. 
And there's some other things too, like if there's investments, there's loans, some other things like that, that you're going to have to make adjustments to based on what was, um, based on what was done during the year, any activity, um, any changes in values and those sorts of things. So, so this process, it, it can be difficult and it can be time consuming and it can require a lot of manual journal entries to make the adjustments to properly reflect the balances in the statement of financial position and statement of activities. And I also want to note that it is possible that transactions will be missed during the process, like without reviewing all of the accounting records. This means that the accuracy of the statements will depend on the completeness and organization of, you know, your or your organization's accounting records and you know how well are they maintained. If you need to convert your nonprofit's financial statements from a cash basis to an accrual basis, I definitely recommend contacting a skilled CPA and probably somebody that's done it before. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me at eric at silverspringaccounting.com. Um, in summary, we have, you know, accrual basis provides the most accurate and transparent financials. I definitely prefer to keep things on accrual basis and to present financials in accrual basis and see financials presented in accrual basis. It just provides a much better picture of an organization's financial health. Um, cash basis is a lower cost option, but it does have a lot of limitations. And the same thing with modified cash. It is an alternative, but it still has you know, pretty significant limitations. And while you can convert from cash to accrual basis, there are some drawbacks and it's better to just really start with accrual basis if you can. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free re to reach out at me. I've linked my firm's website down below and have a wonderful day.